Donald Trump is a man who lives rent-free inside the heads of hundreds of millions. As President of the United States, he thrived on the attention he received. The man portrays a concrete example of narcissism, relishing in his own image in the spotlight while thriving on being the center of attention. The worst part, however, is that it took very little effort on his behalf. Even after he was removed from every major social media platform at the beginning of this year, his presence is still very much felt. His supporters continue to post their idolizing tributes to his presidency. Some will even call him the rightful president of the United States, claiming that the election was stolen by Joe Biden and the Democrats. You know, I feel like we all were told after 2016 that the election was over and the president was decided. The parties really did just switch roles after 2020. Now we get to see the same thing these next four years but from the other side. But even that was a heart-wrenching saga that unfortunately had to play out until the very end and could not have ended any worse than it did. Thousands of Trump supporters willingly marched on the Capitol and then proceeded to storm through the barriers and go inside while an electoral college certification was taking place. So much for rightfully deciding an election, I guess. Millions of Republican voters raged all over the internet about non-existent voter fraud and election sabotage. Well, he was ahead by a lot before Biden found all those votes. They just appeared overnight. If there were any actual sabotage in this election, it would have been proven through evidence in those 70-something lawsuits. Just saying. I'm not going to touch any more on this specific topic. I'm just going to say that arguments presented in support of this are severely flawed and completely nonsensical. But it isn't just his supporters that are trying to keep the former president in the mainstream. The mainstream media is doing the same. When he was president, these news networks and newspapers enjoyed a handsome bounty of clicks and ratings, making advertisers and executives very happy. Trump is no longer in office, and media giants are suffering the consequences of his departure. This is a president who provided plenty of material for reporting in today's news world. Sure, his making America Great Again policies paired with his record spending levels were certainly newsworthy. Even before COVID, we saw lawmakers pass and Trump sign the largest budgets in history to keep the government running. This includes an already astronomical defense budget that grew even larger under his watch. But matters of policy, both foreign and domestic, while impactful at home and around the world, held in comparison to Donald Trump's behavior. Presidents are always subjected to criticism. It's part of having the job. If they choose to respond to criticism, it's with something that sounds more cognitive than emotional. But that just isn't Trump's style. He chooses to respond to any and all criticism with a strike back, strike hard mentality. And strike he did, always making it personal. Elizabeth Warren said he has been evading taxes? Call her Pocahontas and remind everyone that she's a fake Indian. Adam Schiff called you a Russian puppet? His new name is Adam Shit, and he looks like a pencil. Leaders in your own party don't agree with your policies, your behavior, or with whom you choose to associate? they will be walking on eggshells. It was extremely beneficial for him to have a legion of flying monkeys at his disposal who unknowingly did his bidding at his behest, yet willfully and with enthusiasm, they took to the internet and even to the actual streets to denounce his naysayers. He gleefully took in the adulation from watching his supporters clash with his opponents. If that wasn't enough, Trump supporters went above and beyond by dedicating so many parts of their personal lives to him. He was, and still is, the theme of so many social media profiles. His face is on personal vehicles and casual clothing attire. Flags nope. bearing his name are still seen flying in front yards or mounted to the fronts of supporters' homes. Ironically, the idolization of Donald Trump has been the most visible in the evangelical world. Fervent people of faith, comparing their chosen president to the Lord and Savior himself, Jesus Christ. Not to sound preachy or like I'm above anyone else, but didn't Jesus himself say something about not doing that? Again, just saying. Some of his supporters believed everything he said as if it were the word of God. That led to a massive flux of Republican trust in our media institutions. It does need to be mentioned that trust in U.S. media was declining before Trump announced his candidacy. Once he entered the political scene, it snowballed into an avalanche. The result is causing Americans to turn on one another. And it wasn't just Trump who took advantage of the chaos. Cable news networks aired Trump rallies on TV, giving him billions upon billions in free advertising. They were happy to do it. They were too busy enjoying the ratings to care. CNN and MSNBC would agree. 
day after day and night after night, talking heads, contributors, and so-called Trump experts drummed up an abstract plot of a Trump mafia colluding with foreign adversary Russia to steal the Oval Office from Hillary Clinton. Viewers kept returning while being led to believe that these networks were getting closer to uncovering the biggest election scandal in our history they took to the internet and to the actual streets to denounce his election victory. You know, I feel like we all were told after 2016 that the election was over and the president was decided. The parties really did just switch roles after 2020. Now we get to see the same thing these next four years but from the other side. If you think people's reactions were hostile, just look at the man himself. His reactions were always vicious, sometimes taking personal to a new level. He ignited a Twitter feud with a porn star, comparing Stormy Daniels to a horse. He threatened to cut funding from universities that refused to cater to his allies. He accused the father of Ted Cruz of assassinating a sitting president. He has insulted the credibility and intelligence of his opponents to their faces. Does this all sound like bad reality TV? I wish it were. This was and continues to be our reality. Our country has been completely captivated by celebrities, and Trump is by far the biggest one. This was accompanied by all the screaming and crying from the left. The sound of Trump's voice or the sight of his face were responsible for so many protests, so many outraged takes from notable personalities and fervent anger from the left-wing electorate. The anger only energized Trump and his base, but that anger stayed passionate long enough for record numbers to show up at the polls to vote him out of the White House. They danced in the streets when it was all over. The narcissism showed itself most when he was at his lowest. For weeks, he accused his opponent of stealing the election. Even as the lawsuits were failing, he passionately claimed that he was the victim of a scandal. He asked Vice President Mike Pence to reject the official results from the election. And of course, he had his Twitter account. Trump is, without a doubt, the most popular Twitter follow in history. Every tweet received millions of replies from supporters and naysayers alike. People set customized notifications so they would never miss a Trump tweet. Imagine living a sad lifestyle like that. Your entire day is built around replying to some other person's tweets. And what did that even do? Aside from giving the man the attention he craved, what did tweeting at him really do? He tweeted. You tweeted back. You probably felt good. Your brain likely got the shot of dopamine it needed. But beyond that, did it do anything? <laughs> If only we could still visit Trump's Twitter to see all the asinine replies about conviction in prison. Donald Trump was impeached twice. The second time, several senators, including Republicans, said Trump was guilty of inciting violence. The Senate still chose to acquit him. It really makes you wonder. This video would not be complete if I didn't touch on the sheer absurdity from some of those naysayers. All those videos coming from overzealous progressives, never Trump Republicans, and fourth wave feminists. Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President Obama. Elliot, this doll, her emotional wow. support doll, and Elliot gave it to me over the weekend. Very oh, good. Fuck. I don't want to have a civil discussion. I want to call you assholes yeah. by believing these ideas. You're inherently disrespectful of oh, people so, of color, so you don't, of women, oh, really? of gay people, oh, really? of people with depression. How, 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 are, we, how are we inherently? Ruth, you just had to make it to 2021. Celebrities across America led the charge. Late night talk show hosts made him the subject of almost every monologue. YouTubers made endless videos either ridiculing or criticizing him. Actors made PSAs that no one asked for with intent to mock him and his supporters. It all was exhausting. But the best part is that they never saw the irony in any of the things they were doing. They went on relentlessly about Trump. They tried telling the rest of us that his supporters were all members of a new cult. You all might want to take a look in the mirror, just saying. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Now that we've reached the end of this so-called Trump era, it feels like we all need a break. But what does the future hold for us? Will he run again in 2024? He has pondered the idea, saying at the end of his term that he will be back in some capacity. 
After GOP reps voted to certify Biden's victory, Trump threw a giant hissy fit and threatened to create his own party. Since then, he's backed off from that and is now focusing on getting a Trump Republican back in the White House in 2024. But who will that be? He will be nearly 80 by then. Joe Biden is 78, which will be Trump's age in 2024. Biden's age and stamina have been largely scrutinized even by the 2020 Trump campaign. But Trump is Trump. He does not age. He does not lose a step. He is in excellent health, as his doctor once told all of us. But does that mean he is going to run? Or will he choose a candidate to run on his platform? Some early names, like South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, are rumored to be possible Trump choices. No matter what happens, the internet will once again become a rancid cesspool of uncivil political discourse. They say that social media has a tendency to bring out the worst in people. Donald Trump, through the power of the internet, certainly did that while he was in the White House. He is America's social media giant. Even if he isn't allowed back on social media when the next election cycle picks up, his presence will be greatly felt. Imagine doing all of this all over again. The memes, the gifts, the videos, the chaos. I hope you're ready. Since you're attacking us, can you give us a question? Go since ahead. you're no, Mr. President Go elect. Go Mr. ahead. Mr. President elect, ahead. since you are attacking no, our news not organization, you. Not can you. you give us a chance? Your organization you're, you are is attacking terrible. our news organization. Your organization can you give us a chance Let's to go. ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state can, Quiet. Mr. President elect? Go ahead. Can you state categorically Mr. President elect, can you give us a question? Don't be you're rude. attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you give us a question? I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorically? You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. can you stay categorically that nobody... No, Mr. President-elect, that's not Go appropriate. Ahead. 